hello and welcome to another video. Uh, so what I want to talk about, so stick around if you want to hear a bit more about um, basically how to decide whether to continue with something, essentially a very straightforward way of thinking about you know, this thing that I want to do, should I pursue it? And it's something that I've used over the years <clears throat> and it's really just as straightforward as um, make it, taking a pause, making a bit of space, trying to work out how much do you, you know, how much do you want it, I guess is one aspect of it, but I never found that all that helpful because it was lots of things that I wanted to do. There's still lots of things that I want to do. Um, but how do you figure out whether to actually take any steps towards it? Um, and really for me, it came down to what are you willing to, what are you willing to put into it? I don't want to say sacrifice, um, but now, you know, maybe that's the right word, I don't know. I'm quite kind of sensitive when it comes to, not sensitive, but <laughs> I'm never actually going to get to the end of this video because I'm going to struggle to find the right words, but um, I'm quite particular about, you know, the, the words that I use in terms of the meaning that they have. Um, and there's something to do with the way my brain works and um, also just the coaching as well, because that's one of the, the key things I use a lot in coaching is like, you know, picking up on the use of language that's used and I do it to myself all the time. And it's both a blessing and a curse, but it's actually quite good when it comes to uh, coaching sessions. Um, so, yeah, what, what are you willing to put into it? What are you willing to sacrifice? How much effort and energy are you willing to put into it? So... You know, if I think back over my, um, you know, kind of teenage years, adult life so far, professional career so far, spare time as well. You know, I can I can think of a lot of different examples where I've thought of. You know, there's tons of stuff that I want to do. I'm very much that kind of person. Though. There's so much that I would like to do. I think now I've got to, um, what could probably be described as middle age now, um, and realised that I'm not going to be able to do all of these things. Um and so, so you know I'll come, I mean I'll come back to how how I rationalise that a little bit, um but that is an important real realization is that you won't be able to do everything, and so you do need to have some kind of filtering mechanism for how you figure out what you do actually want to do and how much effort you want to put into it. So you know even things like you know I I haven't really talked about this much on here I've alluded to it in in recent videos but um I didn't really know what I wanted to do. When I was a kid, um, you know, there's a lot of different reasons for that, but I kind of drifted along a little bit, you know, I did not too badly for someone who was drifting and not putting, you know, I didn't really feel like I was putting a lot of effort in because I didn't know what I wanted to do, you know, so I kind of drifted towards science and then I did science at uni um, and then halfway through uni I realised that I could go to medical school and I realised I was academically capable enough of doing it after getting some very mediocre grades at school. Um, and then, you know, kind of the rest is history um, after that, I guess. So, you know, things like at the time, um, so certainly in Scotland, um, most degrees are four years. You know, I think maybe in England, I don't know if it's different in England, to be honest. I studied in Scotland for my entire university career, um, but I was always under the um, assumption that most degrees in England were three years. And, you know, it was a bit more normal in Scotland to do four year degrees. So that's an honours degree. So I did an honours degree in science um, graduated from that with the grades I needed to go to medical school and then I did a full five years at medical school. So that was nine years at university. So that was probably one of the first times where I had to actually kind of, you know, but before then it was always go to school, then go to uni, you know, I was encouraged to go to uni uh, to get a degree because, you know, once you've got a degree, no one can take that away from you. It's maybe a little bit different now in the current economic climate and with how much it costs to go to uni these days. Um, but that's by the by. Um, so yeah, you have a bit of a decision to make at that point, and it wasn't too bad for me because I was still, you know, I went to uni when I was, you know, 17, 18, four years at uni, 22, I'm going to medical school at the age of 22. Um, you know, I'm looking at graduating at 27, which isn't too bad, really. You know, there's lots of people that are making way more difficult decisions from that point of view if you're in your 40s and you're thinking about starting that you know that's a, that's a different decision so it wasn't that hard a decision as long as I was kind of academically capable and um, you know I still had my parents who were willing to house me during that time as well uh, although I didn't need it for the whole time um, but you know they were still there to support me which was obviously really helpful and that's another another thing that I don't need to worry about but yeah how much am I willing to put into it and I was you know 
early 20s, I was keen, um, you know, it was going to be a, a, an amazing opportunity for me to go to medical school, open up a lot of avenues for me. So that's what I did. So I was willing to, you know, to make whatever sacrifice I needed to make to do that. Um, that equation becomes a little bit more complex, you know, as you get older, as you introduce other things into your life, you know, families, partners, you know, I'm going to have to move places, all these kinds of considerations. So the, you know, the next big thing that sticks out in my head is I remember at one point I was really attracted to um, working in pre-hospital medicine, uh, as a lot of people are, uh, you know, and I, 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 I trained as an emergency medicine doctor. Um, a lot of emergency medicine doctors are at the hospital because, you know, you're there at the scenes of accidents and medical emergencies. And that's what, you know, a lot of us go into emergency medicine for. So it's, you know, it's the tip of the spear, I guess. Um, it's also some people go into it because they see it as a kind of glamorous, sexy thing as well, um, which was never really, that was never really my motivation. I just always liked the idea of, you know, being the one that was there dealing with things. Um, you know, I, I did always like that idea and I did look into it and you know that was around the time where training programs were being formalized and you know having conversations with people about it and there's a very very formal route for it now uh, in terms of training programs and there's some areas uh, particularly in England you know doing some great stuff with training like the northeast of England does great stuff with training pre-hospital clinicians and they have a fantastic setup um, down there um, but yeah I, I, I kind of saw what a lot of people were doing in order to do that, you know, they were doing a lot of stuff in their own time and they were paying, you know, lots of money to go on courses. Um, and also my personality didn't gel all that well with, you know, my way of thinking and my personality didn't gel all that well with the type of person um, that seems to go into pre-hospital medicine. And again, I'm massively generalising because I know that there's some very, quote unquote, normal <laughs> personality individuals that go into that, but it's, it's become a very alpha driven um, thing. Um, and I'm not, I'm not that type of personality. So that put me off uh, quite a lot. Uh, and I had to, you know, I still wanted to do it. It was something that attracted me, but I then had to consider was I willing to put the effort in and sort of almost become that person a little bit and I just wasn't so I was able to mentally put that to one side and move on and think about what I did want to do um and then one of the next things I explored after that was sports medicine and I you know I did, I did, I did pretty well in sports medicine and um you know but it was a lot of traveling it was a lot of you know time at weekends and stuff and I, you know even had the very great privilege of going to Taipei with um, the Great Britain team to go to the World University Games which was you know a massive career highlight fantastic experience um, you know the, a, a lot of these athletes are you know going to go into great things and um, you know I was working with some great people as well fantastic experience got to travel to Taipei which is a country I probably wouldn't have chosen to go to and then when I got back from that, you know, I just finished training. Uh, I was just about to start my first consultant job. Um, a bit of, you know, I was a bit burned out as well. So I guess that experience in Taipei was great. You know, it was exactly what I needed at the time. And then I was at a bit of a branch there, you know, because really I could probably have pursued sports medicine a bit more aggressively at that point. Um, but then it came down to, you know, I had two kids, um, my other half, um, you know, I was going to be working a busy job, you know, potentially shift work. Um, and ultimately, you know, I, I just decided that I could either go all, all in uh, and see what happened, or actually I could kind of go, you know, actually I'm going to be busy most of the time anyway. I'm not willing to spend that amount of time away from my kids. You know, I'm, I'm not going to have another opportunity to form a relationship with my kids. And ultimately, I decided to step back from that <laughs> as well. And now, you know, four or you know, four years five years after that you know my career's branched off again and it's heading off in a different direction but you know i'm happy with how things are going i'm not having to sacrifice too much at the moment you know i've had to make some compromises but you know i think that ultimately that's going to be something that's going to pay off in the longer term so yeah i think if you're trying to decide if you're on the fence about doing something just figure out what am i willing to put into this and then you know that'll, that'll guide you so i hope you enjoyed that let me know what you think um, please share it and I will see you in the next one.